Green reading can be a really difficult topic to discuss and, and to help someone to how to green read, but I can tell you my process doesn't start when I just get onto the green. It starts right after I hit my shot onto the green. I've hit a beautiful approach shot here. I've got a putt somewhere around 20 feet. Glove goes in the pocket. I always had my caddy hand me the, my putter as soon as I could get it. I wanted to feel what my putter was going to be like in my hands as I walk it up to the green. Now, a lot of country clubs where players or members are taking their carts, they're driving up other carts to the side of the green. They haven't even looked at the green until they actually are standing on it. But I'm, I'm 25, 30 yards short of the green here, and now I'm noticing a lot of things. I'm walking up the hill. I'm looking for spots that might give me hints on what this ball is going to do. I know the high point of the green is in the back. Here's the low point. There's a pond over here to the left. Water's going to drain to that pond. That's going to help me to determine that this putt is not only going to be a little uphill, it's going to break right to left. I can feel with my feet in the ground that there's some slope coming at me. I can look at the green and say, oh boy, this has some grain here. The Bermuda greens in Florida, the, the, the grain always is growing down the hills here. And I can see from starting to read my green, I always start from behind the ball. I've hit a nice shot. Uh, my process would include marking the ball quickly, and I always threw the ball to my caddy immediately. So ball's marked, throw the ball to my caddy, and now I'm paying attention at everything. I'm watching where my opponents are, my playing partners. Um, I start from behind the ball, and trying to figure out where do I need this ball to start. I know this ball is going to break right to left. I know this putts up the hill. Almost every single player is going to tell you, you've got to get to the low side of the putt. You've got to get below it. You can see and feel the slope better from underneath than from above. You can also see more slope from down lower and from farther away. That's why it's imperative that you start reading the green when you're walking up there while you're holding on to your putter. I like to go to the other side of the hole to confirm what I see behind the ball. I'll always take the flag stick out there. It gives me a little bit of an idea. So I can see better the farther I get away, the lower I get down here, and I'm confirming, yep, I see the grain is going towards me, so that'll make the putt a little bit slower because it's up the hill. I've got my spot where I want the ball to start picked out. I have the, what I call the apex, the high point of the putt when it gets somewhere around halfway to the hole. I've got a little light spot here that looks pretty close to where I want to be. So now I've read my green, and this happens pretty quickly. It's not something that takes me a long time. I think the best putters in the world, when they trust their instinct, they feel that and they see it immediately. Uh, and you don't have to be exact. You don't have to be perfect to be a great putter. This is where the visualization starts right now. I've got a pretty good idea now after reading this green where I need this ball to start. I always go back to my early days as a caddy when I was 12, 13 years old. I was starting to read the greens for the members at Rhode Island Country Club. And I have this visualization, this picture in my mind of what the dew line would be like. We were always out early Saturday and Sunday mornings, and I have that image with me on every putt that I hit. I use a line on the ball to help me with my start line, and now I've picked out where I want the ball to start, where the apex of the putt's gonna be, so where I want the ball to be when it gets somewhere halfway to the hole, and I've got computed in all that is the amount of force I need to make that, on the stroke to get the ball to go the right distance. So. I'm putting this, this line down. Yeah, that looks pretty good where I want the ball to start. Um, pick the coin back up. So now I'm in my process. I'm in my routine. I'm back here. I'm seeing the ball, the path the ball is going to travel on. Um, I'm holding on with my right hand. It's loose. It's swinging back and forth. My foot's tapping. Fingers are clicking together. And now as I walk in, watch this. As I walk in, my eyes, my head, they're out. They're where I want the ball to go. I'm not trying to be too precise and how I go. So I'll put the right foot and the putter down about the same time and I'm taking a practice stroke that's kind of freeing me up to, to be able to take my real stroke. So I'm not in my correct stance while I do this. I have one foot back, my left foot's back. I take that one practice stroke. Now the putter goes down behind the ball. I'm looking back out again. Foot goes in. I look the second time. And now I've hit it a little bit low. So I didn't play enough break right there. Nice speed on that putt, and 
I know to become a great putter. You've got to be able to pat yourself on the back even when you miss. I did a lot of good things there. And if you want to become a better putter, a better green reader, it doesn't start when you get on the green. It starts when you hit the ball on the green. So get that putter in your hand quickly. You're going to make more putts.